Welcome again to this session. My name is April Spate and I am a senior cloud advocate on the spatial computing technology team here at Microsoft. Like most of you in this space, I usually create my mixed reality projects in Unity. When I started out with Unity, I was immediately overwhelmed by all the buttons and menus. I'm pretty decent now, however, I'll never forget what it's like to get started for a beginner. And it's not just Unity, rather it's really any game engine. Not only do you have to know where everything is, but you also need to have a programming language in your toolkit. As someone who came from Python to C-sharp, I can honestly say the learning curve was a bit steep. So again, I'll never forget what it's like to get started for a beginner. Having such dependencies just to get started with creating an app that at a minimum even shows a 3D model can provide a great barrier to entry. I personally feel that there's a lot of untapped potential waiting to be discovered if only there was a way to get started with creating mixed reality apps in the low code, no code platform. Well, fortunately, there is such a platform and it's Power Apps. Power Apps is a suite of apps, services, connectors, and a data platform that provides you with an opportunity to build custom apps for your business needs. What I really love about Power Apps is that the platform can really make your team self-sufficient. I'm not saying that developers will become obsolete because someone has to actually build the technology. However, enabling people, especially non-technical staff, to create their own apps without the need to rely on engineering bandwidth is really a game changer for some businesses. As someone who used to work in IT in the nonprofit sector, I've seen this play out firsthand. Someone in another department needs something, but there's already an extensive backlog and limited resources to prioritize someone else's request ahead of others and yada, yada, yada. In any case, with Power Apps, you can connect to data and systems that you're already using. So if you want to connect to SharePoint, OneDrive, Power BI, and even a non-Microsoft product, you can do so with Power Apps, and we have hundreds of them. You can also create apps, forms, and workflows without writing code. I think I like that part most because it really helps accelerate the process of creating something. Now, of course, you can add code if you want and get really fancy with formulas. However, it's not a requirement. And finally, you can use apps on any device. So if you want to use an app on a cell phone, you can do it. If you want to use an app on a tablet, you can do it. And if you want to use an app from your computer, you guessed it, you can do it. So enough about highlighting all the great things about Power Apps, and let's talk about what we're here for. The mixed reality features that are available in Power Apps. Just last year, the folks over in the Power Apps team announced three new mixed reality features. The first feature is View in 3D. With this feature, you can view a 3D model directly in the app. You can rotate the model and even zoom in on the model. Next, there's the View in MR, or View in Mixed Reality feature. So with this feature, you can view a model in your space at scale. You can imagine using this to check out how an item would look in your space, wherever you want the model to go. Not to mention, it could be nice if you see an object matches the color palette of a room, if you're viewing furniture or decorating items. And finally, there is the measure and mixed reality feature. So with this feature, you can measure distance, area, and volume in your environment. This can be helpful in situations where you want to check whether an object actually fits in your desired space. Now, one thing to note here is that 3D models must be in GLB format. And then for all 2D images, they must be in JPEG or PNG formats. So here's a prototype that I created and I'll share with you all today. I'm going to take you through the steps I followed to create this. And if you want to try this out on your own with detailed instructions, stick around to the end for the link to the video tutorial. So let me set the scene. An interior decorator needs a way to provide their clients with a list of available products so that way the client can browse the catalog, view the products in their own space, and then share those photos of the product in their space with the interior decorator. What I did was create a prototype of the scenario, all completely in Power Apps, and I used OneDrive as the destination for the photo upload. On the right is a demo of the app. So let me share that with you. So here I am scrolling through the list of items in the catalog. At the very top, I have this drop down and I can select one. It's like the decor here. I see the items that have decor as their category. I select the tall plant down below. I have some information. And then here in the middle part, I have a, view, a way to view that in 3D. And then from there, I can head over to the view and mixed reality feature, clicking that button bottom left. And then now I can view that model in mixed reality here in my home. 
I need to tap anywhere to place it once the model, once the app has an idea where my ground is. And then walking closer to this model, I can view it from all angles and it's shown at scale, which is pretty helpful as well. Now, next thing I can do is take a photo of this using the camera button and that's the photo being taken. If I head back now and if I navigate to the next screen using the right arrow, I'm able to view that photo and then I select the upload photo button. It's going to upload and then I'll get the notification that the photo has been uploaded. So let's go through the steps that I took to create this. Step one, find models. Now, unless you work with models often, you may be wondering, where can I find 3D models? Do I need to create them? Do I need to buy them? Fortunately, you can close up Blender and even put away your credit card. We have a GitHub repo with a lot of models available for you to use. And in fact, that repo is where I got the models for my own project. Another resource is Microsoft 3D Builder. If you happen to be on Windows, nine times out of 10, you actually already have this program on your computer, but you probably never used it. There are a lot of 3D models available to choose from here, and you just need to find one and save in the GLB format. And then finally, there's the Unity Asset Store. Don't let the word store fool you. Unity actually has some free models available for the community. But of course, if you prefer to buy some models, you can use the store for that as well. All right, step two, set up the folder structure. Now this step is crucial as it can impact whether your models even appear in your app. I provided a diagram here of how the structure should more or less look. First, at the very top, there's the actual project folder. So everything except for the uploaded photos are going to be placed in this folder. You could technically place the uploaded photos folder in here too, however, I kept mine separate. So the project folder has three children and that's going to be the next level down. First, there's going to be the models folder. This is where I placed all the models. Next, there's the photos folder, and this is where I place the PNG images of the models. Finally, there's the Excel spreadsheet, and that contains all the data for the model. So the name, description, cost, category, etc. Now, why did I set up the project using this structure? Well, in the spreadsheet that I'm going to head into in a second, I use relative links in order to access the models and their photos. Long ago, when I created another Power Apps project that included photos, I uploaded everything to Azure Blob Storage and placed the links for each image into the spreadsheet. Now, although that option may actually serve your own needs, I found it to be a bit time consuming, so instead using relative links was significantly quicker. And before I forget, all of these folders, models, images, etc., are going to be saved in OneDrive, as you'll later connect to the data via OneDrive in the Power App Studio. So let's talk a bit more about that Excel spreadsheet. Step three, create the Excel spreadsheet. This is another crucial step as it also impacts whether your models, photos, and all product information even appear in your app. The name, description, and category columns are all case sensitive. So ensure that you type everything using the proper case. As for the model and image columns, this is where the relative links come into play. And it's also why the project structure is set up the way that I just shared. You can use relative links to access both the model files and image files, so long as the files are within the same folder as that Excel spreadsheet. And after you add all the product information, you'll need to create all of the pertinent cells into a table. If you're unsure how to do this, in Excel, navigate to Home and Format as Table. And of course, make sure that all the cells are highlighted. Step four, connect data. Data is connected in Power Apps using a connector. I like the fact that Power Apps has this feature because I personally don't like getting into the nitty gritty of working with APIs to connect data. As I shared earlier, there are literally hundreds of connectors available. And for a list of all connectors, you can visit aka.ms slash connectors. So step five, you're going to create the screens. So my app has three screens. I'll go through the first one of what needs to be done for the gallery screen. The gallery screen is where all the products are listed. I included a drop down component, which enables the client to select one of the product categories. Below the drop down component is a vertical gallery component. I changed the layout to only display the product image, the name, and the price. One thing I would suggest to do for each item in the gallery is to make the entire item pressable, or a button if you will. This avoids the need for the client to wonder whether they actually press the right part of the screen to view the product information. And speaking of product information, the next screen created was the product information screen. This screen is where the client can read the product information, view the product in 3D, and view the product in mixed reality. 
All product information was created with text label components. The View in 3D model uses the View in 3D component, and the View in Mixed Reality feature uses the View in Mixed Reality component. The final screen to create is the Upload Photo screen. This screen is where the client can view the photo that was taken with the View in Mixed Reality feature. It was a little tricky getting the layout to display like this. However, I used a horizontal gallery component and expanded the entire space for the item. I also used the button for uploading the photo. The button workflow was created with Power Automate, which I'll share with you in a second. However, one thing I will share is that you can modify the naming convention for the file name of the photo that's uploaded. So let's talk more about Power Automate. But first of all, what is Power Automate? Power Automate is a no-code, low-code platform for created automated processes. Those processes are referred to as a flow. You can learn more about Power Automate by visiting aka.ms docs power automate. For this project, I used the Power Apps trigger and the create flow action. After the flow is created, your list of flows in the Power App Studio refreshes and lists the flow as one of the available flows. And that's pretty much it. If I had to place a timetable on creating everything, I'd say it took me about 30 minutes to create this project. Sure, I used some formulas for some of the components, but even so, the formulas weren't lines upon lines of code. Now, of course, what good is creating something without doing your own retrospective once you're done? Therefore, I'm going to share what I learned. First and foremost, I learned that it's better to master one feature at a time before trying to use all features at once. I initially planned on having a feature whereas the client could measure their space and then the app would filter the products based on the measurements taken. This actually somewhat worked, but I only got it to work for only one of the measurements and not the collective total of all the measurements taken. I spent about two hours on that only to realize that I could have saved time by creating a text label that pulls in what was actually being calculated as sort of a way to debug my issue. The next thing I learned was to double check the spreadsheet before connecting my data in Power Apps. As much as I love the cool automated features we've integrated into Excel, whereas Excel can guess what you're going to add to the next cell based on whatever pattern you got going, I was led astray and didn't realize that some of the automations didn't create the relative links accurately. It didn't take me two hours to figure that out, but it did take me 10 minutes to realize that something was wrong in the spreadsheet. Another gotcha with the spreadsheet is to ensure that all words which should be capitalized are capitalized and ones that should be lowercase are actually lowercase. The first time I tried to make this app, I entered all the product names lowercase and wondered why none of the names actually started with a capital letter in Power Apps. Also, when I first tried to connect Power Apps to an Excel spreadsheet, I completely missed the steps to make the cells into a table. You'll know that you missed this step if Power Apps doesn't give you a table to choose from during the data connection workflow. The final thing I learned is that I should document all formulas, even the bad ones. It can become second nature to get rid of something that you're trying out that doesn't quite work the way you expect it. However, in all the time creating formulas, I realized that some parts of the bad ones actually worked. I didn't realize this at first and I ended up reinventing the wheel each time I created a new formula. Also, documenting formulas is helpful if you plan to create a tutorial or some sort, which is what I did. Okay, what's next for me and this sample? I want to add in that measure and mixed reality feature that I mentioned. I know it's possible. We actually have a partner who has actually implemented that. I just need to figure out how to overcome my mistakes. Next, I want to modify the UI and the UX. Since I was more focused on the functionality, I never got a chance to actually make things look pretty. I need to take a moment to look at the color palettes for some existing interior decorating apps to find which palettes actually work best for these sort of apps. I also want to add a wizard feature that takes the client through a three-step process of first selecting a product category, then measuring their space, and finally returning a list of products based on the measurements taken. Finally, I want to add a way to view all the photos that were taken. Right now, the client can't view all past photos taken in the app. I think it'd be nice to view all photos and even photos for a particular category. Bonus points if I could somehow label the photos based on the product. All right, let's wrap things up with some resources. First, we provide a great deal of docs for Power Apps, including a learning path on Microsoft Learn. Again, if you're searching for 3D models, we provide a GitHub repo, and you can also use Microsoft 3D Builder and even the Unity Asset Store if you want some free models. Like Power Apps, we also have a lot of docs available for Power Automate. This includes a Microsoft Learn module as well. 
And finally, here's a link to the video tutorial that I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation that provides a detailed step-by-step -step instruction of how to create this app. That's all that I have for now, everyone. You can stay connected with me on Twitter at Vogue and Code. I'm still pretty new to using the Mixed Reality features. However, I can try my best to help you out and answer your questions. And so with that said, let's head into the Q&A.